Hey, what's up? It's Lucas, and in today's video, we're talking about how to use social media to get coaching clients. And why I'm bringing this up is I want to end this insane roller coaster or this insane pattern that I used to be in, and I see a lot of coaches in of just posting on social media or starting Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or just posting content but not getting result. And likes and comments are not a result. Cash and clients, conversations, those are the results we're after with our content. And I'm going to break things down into really four sections. I can promise you this, and this is a big, bold claim. I can promise you this. Reach out to me when you get this result, because I can promise you this. If we could apply these four things, one thing at a time, but apply these four things over the next week into your content, you will get clients. You will start conversations. You will make cash, you'll make money, you'll change people's lives, you'll grow your business. And why I'm gonna cover four things is I found that there's not one thing, there's never one thing that changes something. It's always a recipe. It's always a few things. So as we're going through these four things, just do a bit of an assessment. If you're doing some of these well, awesome. But the one you're not doing well, let's apply that first. And then we'll apply the second, and then we'll apply the third. So with that said, I'm gonna stop talking about that and we're gonna start talking about the doing. Knowledge is knowing, wisdom is doing. Don't let this be knowledge. Let this be doing, let this be action. I'm gonna make this as actionable as I can. First thing, macro and micro. And one of each. And here's what I mean by macro and micro. So, we run a podcast. It's a top rated podcast, not bragging, just letting you know there's a ton of value in it. We put a lot of time into our podcast. It hits the top 10 charts, USA, Canada, Australia, the UK, in sales and marketing all of the time. And it's a macro piece of content. It's 20 minutes long, 30 minutes, 40 minutes long. If you wanna check that out, lucasrubix.com. Check out the podcast, I'll put the link around here somewhere. Either way, it's packed with value and it's macro. But a podcast doesn't necessarily get found organically. It can, especially if you really grow it and you start you know, getting on the top 10 list. We were just on an article of the top 20 podcasts to listen to for sales and marketing. So of course that helps us grow. But for the most part, especially when you're starting, if you're doing a podcast episode every week, but you're not getting more viewers into the podcast, we're wasting our time, other than the skill development. But for the most part, we're not as efficient, as effective as we could be. But if we have a micro piece of content, so for example, we also have a Facebook group, it's private. There's over 7,000 online coaches in there. And every time a episode comes out, we can chunk it out. We can, we can cut it up. We can create a little 60 second clip. Or we can post the episode in that Facebook group and it's micro content. It's much more shareable. You can engage with it a little bit more. You can leave a comment. You can talk to me. You can talk to Sarah. You can talk to the team. You can, you can voice your opinion, your comment on the podcast. You can share it easier. It's micro. So we have a macro one, the podcast, and a micro one, Facebook. Nowadays, of course, we have a few macros. We have uh, YouTube and we have an Instagram. And we have a few micro. We have a Facebook group, we have a personal Facebook, we've got an Instagram, and I'm gonna get into the second quadrant here in a second here, but I have a team that helps me put it out there. I don't write the content, it's like I create it and that's it. When you start, you don't have that, and so it's very important to just pick one macro one micro, I'll let you know right now, if I was starting from scratch all over again, I would probably pick a YouTube channel, a macro piece of content, and then I'd pick a Facebook group, a micro, and that's it. I would not have more than two platforms. And I would master those two platforms. Let me know if this lands, let me know in the comments if you're doing too much. Because if you're trying to master multiple platforms, you, you end up just sort of half-assing, for lack of a better term, but you half-ass it. You don't go all the way. You don't take it to its max potential and so it never takes off. But if you could focus on one macro, one micro and go all in, study it, find ways to engage better, find ways to master your craft and master that platform, you'll watch it grow way faster. And then once you see those grow and you're making $25,000, $40,000 a month and you hire a team, now you can get on multiple to create more of an income. But just likes and shares or trying to get followers is such a poor strategy, which brings me to my second point. By the way, like this video, let me know what you thought below, and honestly, if you just want videos, if you wanna go through like a PhD or a business school of growing an online coaching business, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's two to three videos every single week that go in this much detail. 
you will pull something away from every video to help grow your coaching business. So make sure that you subscribe and let me know anything that stands out. Let me know. I love reading your comments. Number two, the plan. You've got to have a plan and I'm going to illustrate and give you examples. The intention for the podcast that we run is not to get clients. In fact, the podcast doesn't really convert into clients on the podcast. My intention for the podcast is for it to be a purely relationship builder. Our clients find us through other platforms and they come into the podcast and they're blown away. Like, try it out. In, within three episodes, you'll be like, whoa, this is madness. This is crazy. If it resonates, if it doesn't, you won't. But for some, it really resonates. They're like, I, I, it's, I love this. It's 20, 30 minutes. We interview Grant Cardone's and, and we just had Taylor Welch. And we've got Robert Greene, the strategist, the author, and, and just bringing on the best of the best guests and making sure that we just give pure value to the podcast. Generally, doesn't convert it to clients. That's not the intention. That's never been the plan of the podcast. Plus, it helps us with positioning and it gives us access to some really big names that are fairly inaccessible for the most part. Cool? That's the plan. That's the strategy for the podcast. Now, the YouTube channel, much different. The YouTube channel, the video you're watching here, it's very how to, it's searchable. We find it and it's a great relationship builder, but it's also a great platform, a great hub to send to the website, to send into our niche guys, to send into all the goodness, all the free goodness we have. And it starts a lot of relationships, a lot of conversations for working with us. But I know that that's a platform that we get searched on within Google, within YouTube and people find us. That's the intention of YouTube. Now the Facebook group, that's very different. Our Facebook is very interaction. We go live all the time. I get to interact. I get to on ground level see what you're struggling with. I get to chat. We get to connect and it moves into conversations. And now the Instagram, I don't use Instagram. If you check out the Instagram at Lucas Rubik's, I post maybe once a week. But it's a digital business card that I'm rarely on, but it also helps us get access to bring some big name guests on. And it's also a business card. Someone searches, says, oh yeah, okay. They're on Instagram and then they go to the LinkedIn profile. I don't use it to get clients. And so I'm very intentional with every platform. Every platform is there for a reason. Have a plan for your social. Just posting to get followers and likes without a plan behind it. What's the strategy behind it? Why are we posting? Why are we on this platform? Do you even want to be on this platform? We were on LinkedIn when we were doing way too much. We cut off LinkedIn. Medium, cut. Snapchat. Back in the fitness days, I used to be on Snapchat because everyone else was, but I hated it. Guess what? Never worked. Cut. Done. Be intentional. Number three, listen and give. I hope you can see that. Yeah, listen and give, listen and give. This comes down to two things and I'm gonna, the bottom quadrant is the two things that, that is probably going wrong is if you're already creating content, maybe you even have a micro and a macro platform, maybe you already have a plan for your social and you wanna grow your YouTube or whatever that is, but you're getting no engagement. It's not moving into conversation. No one cares. It's for one of two reasons. If nothing's happening, you're not listening and we're not giving. And so every time I go live, let's say on Facebook, I will spend 20 minutes after the live and just go through the comments and try to figure out, okay, how could I, like, what were some of the best questions? I do an ask me anything call at least once a week. What are some of the best questions? I'll create content around that. We have to know our, our avatar or our perfect clients. We have to know your audience's needs. And if we can understand their needs and listen, then we can give them what they want. A lot of people are trying to force what someone needs instead of giving them what they want. Massive difference. If we're coming at content from like, I know what they need or just tooting your own horn or just creating content because it's fun without the mentality of how can I serve? What can I give? What do people need? What do people want? And then give them what they need. Massive difference. Game changer. And I have found that even when people think they're doing it, they're doing it wrong. They're not really listening. What do people really want? How can you really solve some problems? Create content around that. You won't have a problem converting. And here's the third or the fourth final one is call to actions. If you're doing all of this and you're even listening, you're like, but I'm giving people what they want. Here's the final thing is, are you making call to actions in your content? When I go live, every time I'm live, I'll end it, hey, once or twice even within the live, I'll see if any of this is resonating. If you're ready to drop the fear, jump in, go all in. If you'd like to work with the team, if you'd like to grow your coaching business, if you'd like support, accountability, reach out, leave a comment, check out lucasrubix.com or whatever the link may be. Always, every single time, 
not in a hard sell, like you have to do it, but just like if this is resonating, let us know. Let me know, reach out in the DM, leave a comment, check out lucasrubers.com and we can get into a conversation to see if this, if this is the best fit for you. If it's a YouTube video, it could be, hey, like this video, let me know what you think and subscribe. If you want more videos like this, subscribe, that's a call to action. But oftentimes we just take for granted that, oh yeah, if people, people like it, you know, they'll come. If we make great content, people come and comment and share it. You've gotta ask. Every piece of content, you may have a different call to action. You may have one or two call to actions for your cold and warm. Or that piece of content may be to a warm and a hot audience. So you may be asking for a little bit more, book a call, whatever that may be. But you have to have a call to action within every piece of content. Even if that's, hey, let me know what you thought below. Without it, you may not get the traction you want. So to quickly review and let me know in the comments. That's my call to action to you and I really appreciate it. Out of all these four quadrants, um, tips, ingredients to social media success for your coaching business, which one are you lacking the most? Hold yourself accountable to applying that. So if it's a, you're like, I have no plan. Start with that. Spend a day, create a plan. And then it's like, I never do call to actions. Then do that. Then do this. Then do this. Next thing you know, your social media will convert, will get you clients, will start conversation, ultimately will make you more cash. Let me know which one you're doing first, which one you could do better. What's the lowest hanging fruit? And with that said, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. I put the best of the best. So we're always getting engagement on Facebook, trying to figure out like what is it people really want? How, what can really serve? And I take the best of the best and we create YouTube content around it. And so if you want videos like this, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that bell, hit that notification. And with that said, truly appreciate you. www.lucasrubis.com for absolutely anything else. The Coaches University is a stay until you get paid coaching program. If you're ready to just drop the I can do this myself and get into alignment with the team that'll help you get there so much faster and we back it up with a stay until you get paid guarantee. Check out www.lucasrubix.com. It's impossible to miss the university. You'll find it or just click the link around here somewhere. And with that said, truly appreciate you. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon. I believe in freedom. In a world of people who see more concern about what others think of them, it takes courage to be yourself. It takes courage to stand out, to follow your heart, to chase your dreams. I believe in staying humble yet confident. I believe in showing love yet fighting for what you believe in. I believe in choosing life over likes in letting your actions speak louder than your words, in seeing money as a tool, not the destination. I believe in service, kindness, leadership, and of course, really, really, really fast motorcycles. I believe that you can recover from any mistake, that you can start from wherever you are, and that anyone can do anything if they fully commit. I believe that happiness doesn't come from what you have, but who you are. And who you are is not defined by what you've done, but by who you've become. I believe in taking risks, challenging the status quo, living life to the fullest, and inspiring others to do the same. I believe in taking full responsibility for my actions, and I know that the results in my life are completely up to me. I believe in freedom.